nestled within the eight hectares of land in the beautiful community of Monaco, along the highway, nine kilometers south of Cebu City, is a school that embodies a culture of excellence, service, and integrity. Blessed with competent faculty and staff whose role model is Jesus Christ, the school provides Bible-based instructions to students as it aims. Restoring man the image of his maker. To bring him back into the perfection of his creation. that the divine purpose of this creation might be realized. AEC is my home away from home. It is where friends, classmates, and teachers become family. AEC has been an avenue of my spiritual growth. It has made me learn how to showcase God's love in music. AEC means so much more than just a school to me. It has also become my home. For the past few years of studying here, I have grown remarkably. I was once a reckless and lazy student, but when I started studying here, I have been excelling academically, and I have also grown a lot spiritually. As a Seventh-day Adventist own institution, AEC is one with the mission of the church to go, reach the world, and to share the message of love and hope. And the blessed hope but if I get discouraged I call to Jesus help because I have decided I we offer kindergarten elementary junior high school and senior high school with the academic strand STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics, humans, humanities and social sciences, ABM, accounting, business and management. Believing that music can be a great power for good, we offer special classes in music.
faculty and staff, and everyone watching us online. Good evening. On behalf of Adventist Academy Cebu, I would like to welcome each of you to our Voice of Youth program. The Voice of Youth is the witnessing program of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to proclaim the three angels' messages through small groups or teams. It is designed to motivate and help young people to proclaim the three angels' messages in their local communities using relevant means and to provide them with the opportunities and resources needed to effectively make disciples for Jesus. So this evening, our very active young people and students of Adventist Academy are inspired to let their voices be heard in a way that will bless everyone. The song presentation was rendered by the Sixtet and AAC Orchestra. After my part will be the opening song to be led by our song leader, Kailin Bilio, and our pianist, Micaela Eve Lamorin. Then the opening prayer will be offered by Lara Litig. Then, Lynette Shane and Cheryl Angeline Gaa will render the special song. Then, we will be blessed with the message in words by our speaker, who will be introduced by yours truly. After the message, will be the singing of closing song and the closing prayer will be led by Kate Sanchez. To set our minds for our program tonight, let me share with you a quote from Ellen G. White found in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7 and page 64. The Lord has appointed the youth to be His helping hand and in Education, page 271, with such an army of workers as our youth, rightly trained, might furnish, how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world. Once again, good evening. 
For your opening song, let us sing our theme song, Happiness is the Lord. Before I offer a prayer, I would like to read a Bible text found in the book of Romans 12 verses 1 to 2. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Let us pray. Our gracious God in heaven, we praise and adore you for you are so loving and kind to each one of us. We humbly bow our heads for we acknowledge our sinful nature. Dear Father, please cleanse us from all our unrighteousness Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us that our worship may be acceptable to you. We express our gratitude for providing us countless of blessings that you never fail to give us. We also thank you for giving us this opportunity to gather here tonight for our virtual worship. We pray in a special way for our speaker, Lois Vargas. Anoint her lips so that she may deliver your word the way you intended it to be. Dear God, please grant us the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and our minds. Guide us to the right path like a shepherd leading his sheep back to green pastures. Thank you for listening to our prayer. In the loving name of Jesus, Amen.
this evening is a grade 11 science, technology, engineering and mathematics student. She is the daughter of Mr. James Gregorio Vargas and Mrs. Venus Poliona Vargas. She is also an active member of Bulacao Seventh-day Adventist Church. Our speaker is none other than Lois Andrea P. Vargas. Let us give her our undivided attention as she delivers the message of God this evening. Who among you know who Saul Tarsus, who was later called Paul, is? The first time you met Saul of Tarsus, who was later called Paul, he was part of the group who was killing Stephen for preaching about Jesus. Paul was the enemy of the Christians. He was probably the one they feared the most. Members of the church in Jerusalem fled to other areas to try to escape from Paul, but he got permission to chase after them, even to Damascus. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Have you also asked the Lord about what he wants you to do with your life? Tonight's another night for our Voice of Youth evangelistic series. To my fellow young people, to our brothers and sisters, and friends in the different parts of the world who are listening and watching to our live streaming tonight, good evening to all of you. God has been so gracious to us, for He has given us this another night where we could again be filled with His words. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lois Andrea Poliuna Vargas, and I attend Adventist Academy Cebu formerly East Visayan Academy, where youth begin to serve, and I'm currently in year 11. It is my pleasure to worship the Lord with you this evening. Tonight, I will be speaking to you about the topic, The Will of God and His Plan. 
I am inviting you to please bow your heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow down our heads before you, awestruck by who you are. We invite your holy presence to be in our midst as we study your words. Lord, as I speak your words today, please grant me the heavenly wisdom and knowledge that I need through the guidance of your Holy Spirit for me to be able to deliver your message well. Guide also the viewers as they listen. Touch their hearts, O God, that they may be inspired and be assured that you have a will, a purpose, and a plan for their lives. In Jesus' precious and humble name, Amen. What is God's will for my life? It's a simple but profound question asked by teenagers, young adults, and aging adults at every juncture of life. Did God just put you here just to exist for a while and then call you home? No. God has a purpose, a plan, and a will for your life. Isn't that comforting? You don't have to come up with some remarkable life expedition, enjoy life with friends, go abroad, tour around the world, or move to the jungle. You need only to spend time with Him, listen and obey when He speaks. God's ultimate will is the advancement of His kingdom, His glorification, and the salvation and sanctification of His children through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is His desire to be in a loving relationship with us first and for us to practice good deeds secondly. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God's plans were formulated and prepared before your birth or even before time begin. He already has agenda for your life, for your career, for your ministry, finances, and for your family. And His plans should always take precedence over your own. Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 2, and it reads in the New American Standard Bible, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world. The world out there demands that we conform to it. The world tells you what you should be. Isn't there just like a unified voice from the world that says, this is what you have to be, conform to this standard of beauty, conform to this kind of style, and conform to this kind of attitude. And our understanding of God's will is like all about suffering, it is hard, it is painful. But Apostle Paul always reminded us in verse 2, to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We must be transformed, not just our external behavior, but the way we feel and think, our minds. So that you may prove what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. Wow! The will of God is good, acceptable, and perfect. At the very beginning, it seems to be not good, unacceptable, and imperfect. But the moment you understand and you begin to renew your mind, always remember that the God you're serving is your Father. The Father you have is the best Father. That's why what He wants for you to have is something good, acceptable, and perfect. We usually look at this passage and talk about surrender. But surrender to what? The will of God, 
or we talk about separation. But separation to what? The will of God. And that should be the greatest desire of our hearts, to know and to do the will of God. Our focus today is on the meaning of the term will of God and how we can understand it. In Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 17, it says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Wise people don't waste every chance, but the foolish waste time. They think they have a very long life, especially the young people nowadays. They often think we still have a long life to live so we can do whatever we want. But those who are wise know that they will die soon. So they want to make sure that every second will be spent properly or wisely. How can we do that? Don't act thoughtlessly. Don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. God is commanding us to understand His will. In order to understand His will, we need to, first, we need to seek the will of God. Good news! God isn't playing keep away with His will, or His will isn't far off or hard to find. God wants us to know His will even more than we want to know it. He said, seek and ye shall find. Draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. If you are facing a big or even a small decision, you wish God would just write His will for you on the wall or speak with an audible voice. But He rarely chooses to make His will for your life that obvious. Instead, He wants you to be persistent in seeking His guidance. We need to seek God's will in whom we marry, where we go to college, and what we do with our lives. There is this young woman who is known as the least selfish person in their community. Her folks overheard her praying one night before bed. Dear Lord, I ask nothing for myself, but please give my mama a very handsome in-law. Just like this young woman, if you also want your mother to have a very handsome in-law, then you can ask God for it, seek His guidance, and pray to God about it. However, if it is not God's will for you to have a very handsome partner in life, well, maybe God just wants you to have a handsome, just handsome partner in life, then don't be choosy. Maybe God just really wants you to have a very kind partner in life, bahalag maot, but a person who sincerely loves you. Seriously, it's not your life. You belong to God. Don't settle for less than God's best. Seek His perfect will for your life. If you have actually already decided what to do and are only coming to God so He can approve your decision, you are not really seeking His will. You don't have the right to just decide what you're going to be and what you're going to do. Seek His will. Just like that young woman, we all should seek His will for all decisions, big and small. Second, we need to surrender to the will of God. As you seek God's will, it is important to be sure that you are fully open to whatever God wants. Not with eye service as man-pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Ephesians 6 verse 6 The self must be denied because our carnal mind is driven by pride and an underlying belief and desire that we must get things for ourselves. We must subsequently live our lives as living sacrifices. The Lord says, Surrender to me and it's going to be good to you. 
I always have your best purpose in mind. God knows your gifts, your talents, and your calling even better than you do. And when you really walk in and live in fulfillment of your gifts, your talents, and calling, there is nothing greater in the world. We need to surrender completely to the will of God. Jesus is the very epitome of this. He knew God's will for the end of his life. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, he surrendered to that which would not be pleasant for his human nature. Not my will, but thine be done. Jesus prayed. Third, we need to stand in the will of God. Once we know his will, we need to surrender to it and then stand firm in it, not drifting to the right or to the left. In Colossians 4 verse 12, it says, Stand firm in all the will of God, much sure and fully assured. God's plan for, for your life is abundant life, joyful life, and fulfilled life. I believe it completely. But that doesn't mean that every day is wonderful. There's going to be pain, there's going to be suffering and difficulties along the way. However, standing firm in the will of God means that we will not bow down or give in or be persuaded to do anything contrary to God's will. Once God leads you to make a decision, don't draw back. Instead, trust His leading and believe He goes before you for he does. God loves us more than we love ourselves. He knows of greater possibilities and more success that we could achieve if only we'll seek and follow his plan. Just imagine the advantage you'd have if you handcrafted a person to your own design and knew exactly what lay ahead of them throughout every moment of their future. God is our creator. God is more qualified to plot a course for our lives than we are. In the Panama Canal is a series of locks. And if you want to cross there, you have to be able to accurately navigate through them. Each lock has markers which the captain must use. He has to maneuver the ship so that the markers line up in a straight sequence. God in his word has several markers that we can go by and when they line up, we have a better assurance of what God's will is for our lives. The first marker is recognition. God's will is real. The first step is recognizing that God has a will for your life. It's a very real thing we see throughout the Bible. I can't know all the details of God's will for your life, but I know one thing for sure. God does have a plan for your life. What a powerful and captivating thought that God is so involved in something as small as little old me. Every time I go out from our house and look up in the sky, I can see sparrows flying, sometimes hopping from branch to branch in the trees, singing and dancing their little hearts out. For some, a sparrow is so insignificant, and yet God has a plan for each of them. How much more with us? God says, they are practically worthless. However, God still has a plan for them. We are the highest of God's creation, made in His image. It's unthinkable that God would not have a plan for our lives. His eye is on the sparrow, and you know He's watching you too. God's will can be refused. God will not make you do His will. He has given us the free will to choose. He didn't force Adam and Eve to obey him, but gave them a choice and it's been that way ever since. Why? 
because God wants his people to choose to love, obey, and follow him, not slaves that do it by force. A rapist forces himself on someone because no one would choose to love him in many cases. But the Lord allows people to say no to him. And when one says no, God's will is hindered. A huge number of Christians today say they believe in God, but they choose to live their life their own way. Some may even seem famous, happy, successful, or making a lot of money. But if they aren't in God's will, they are a failure. However, if you make the wrong decision or at first you refuse the will of God for you, don't worry because a loving Heavenly Father will still walk you through it and guide you to the best place in His will after that. It's not like God is going, ha ha, they chose the wrong one, now I get to nail him. He is not like that at all. We serve a loving God. The will of God is very real. It may be refused, but it is always right. When you and I walk in the will of God, whatever He allows is for our good. That's hard to take sometimes, but it is true. God desires us to do His will because He wants the best for each and every one of us. Imagine a guy who likes to play the violin. He turns on a city of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony and begins to play at the same time, but he is playing Yankee Doodle. He can do that if he wants, but there will be a real mess. Big time discord in that house. You know what? God has arranged a great symphony for your life. Don't be found off in a corner playing Yankee Doodle, but pay attention to the great conductor and follow him beat for beat. God's will is real. It can be refused, but it is always right. The second marker is resolution. You must resolve in advance that once you know His will, you will do it. Most of the people will say, I like to follow the will of God, but I'm afraid I can't do it. I'll just wait for it. Just first tell it to me, Lord, then there I will decide whether I will follow or do your will or not. And it shouldn't be like that. If you truly want to understand the will of God, your beginning point must be, I am decided to do the will of God. Don't approach God's will cafeteria style, taking which parts you like and leaving what you don't. Decide in advance that you trust Him who is trustworthy. God does not reveal His will to us so that we may consider it. You'll never know God's will for your life if you have this attitude. God reveals His will to those He knows will obey it. God loves us so much that He gave His only begotten Son. In the book of John, verse, in the book of John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God wants all men to be with him in heaven. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 it says, "Who God who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth." What is that knowledge of the truth? What is the reason behind why God wanted all men to come to a knowledge of the truth? In Titus chapter 1 verse 1 it says, "Knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness." What is that truth? In John 8 verse 32, it says, The truth will set you free. Who is the truth? John 14 6, it says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. Acts 4 12, Neither is there salvation in any other. 
For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Friends, do you want to be saved? Do you want to be in heaven? Come to Jesus. Accept the truth. Know more about him. Receive Jesus into your life. Jesus can set you free. We need to accept Jesus as our personal Savior. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. But remember, in Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Jesus' will is to obey God's commandments with a loving relationship with Him. God has given us the law of love, His Ten Commandments in Exodus 20 verses 3 to 17, which is love to God and love to man. In John 14 verse 15, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. God has a command for us to obey, and it is God's will for us to love Him. Our keeping of His law or command is the result of being saved by grace through faith. Doing God's will is a wonderful life. You will not walk in darkness. In Psalm 119 verse 105, Thy word is lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Our God is not some evil personality, a cosmic killjoy, whose goal is to make you miserable. He loves you and has a wonderful plan and wants you to know it. One day, a grandfather told his grandson, I'm leaving to run some errands. Do you want to come with me so we can spend time together? The grandson asked, Where are you going? He replied, if you want to be with me, then it doesn't matter. God says, will you surrender to my will? You say, well, what is it? His reply, it doesn't matter. Recognize that God has a will for you. Resolve that you will do it and then the revelation will follow. The third marker, revelation. When we walk in what light we've been given, God gives us more light. Some people don't know God's will for their future because they're not doing God's will right now. Why should He reveal His will about tomorrow if you are not obeying Him today? He said, if you are faithful in the least, then you'll be faithful in much. The way to know God's will tomorrow is to do His will today. You cannot know God's personal will for your life if you disregard God's moral will for your life. Being right with God comes before being right in the middle of His will. Friends, Jeremiah 7.23 says, Obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people. What we need to do today is to trust God and to obey His will. God has a plan for all of us. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins. Imagine how He loves you so much. How He demonstrated His great love. Look in Romans 5 verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before a sinner decides to discard sins, Christ died for him. Friends, Jesus died for you. He suffered on the cross for you to be saved. He wanted all of us to be with him in heaven, to enjoy life in eternity. Do you want to be with God in heaven too? 
Will you accept his plan of salvation for you tonight? Will you willingly do his will in your life today? He loves you so much. Always remember that. What is your response to Jesus' sacrifices for you? Will you say this with me? Lord, I love you. I will do your will and keep your commands in my heart. Lord, help me and save me in your kingdom. If that is also your desire tonight, let me invite you to bow your heads with me. Let us pray. Lord, we want to know and do your will. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. Help us to trust and obey your commands and your will. Save us in your kingdom. Forgive us from all of our iniquities. In Jesus' precious and humble name, amen. For our closing song, let us sing our theme song, Happiness is the Lord. gracious, kind, loving Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne of grace, pleading for the forgiveness of our sins. We have sinned against you, yet you have been gracious and compassionate to forgive us and accept us just as we are. O oh God, we thank you for this gift of life and for the blessings you have showered upon us each and every day. We thank you for the freedom of worship and we are surely blessed with the message we have learned this evening. May we apply it to our daily lives, and we thank you for everything you have given us. And please help us to remember that as children of God, to know and to do your will must be the greatest desires of our hearts. Lord, may the Holy Spirit continue to be with us now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Nestled within the eight hectares of land in the beautiful community of Malacca, along the highway, nine kilometers south of Cebu City, is a school that embodies a culture of excellence, service, and integrity. <laughs> with competent faculty and staff whose role model is Jesus Christ. The school provides 
Bible-based instructions to students as it aims. Restoring man the image of his maker. To bring him back into the perfection of his creation. that the divine purpose of His creation might be realized. AEC is my home away from home. It is where friends, classmates, and teachers become family. AEC has been an avenue of my spiritual growth. It has made me learn how to showcase God's love in music. AEC means so much more than just a school to me. It has also become my home. For the past few years of studying here, I have grown remarkably. I was once a reckless and lazy student, but when I started studying here, I have been excelling academically, and I have also grown a lot spiritually. As a Seventh-day Adventist owned institution, AEC is one with the mission that church to go, reach the world, and to share the message of love and hope. Until Jesus calls me, AC, I will go. 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 The blessed hope, but if I get this courage, I call to Jesus' help because I have decided 